throughout football history, wise men have congregated to bring you the best stats, predictions, and analysis of the game. These are not those men. Three derelict Oakland Raiders fans expelled from clown school for shaping inappropriate balloon animals at children's birthday parties and borrowing the school clown car to attend a Murphy's Law gig in Brooklyn. With no ambitions outside of rodeo barrel racing and the Shiner Circus, they made their way to the rolling hills of northwestern New Jersey and established a home at the Irish Cottage Inn. Surrounded by Jets and Giants fans, they called in reinforcements and established a circus sideshow of their own, known as the New Jersey Chapter of the Black Hole. Join the party each week on the Fan Club Blitz, a wild ride into the world of die-hard football team fan clubs from across the globe with your hosts, Splatterhead, Fitz, and Tom, Clown School Rejects. Oh, what's going on? It's Splatterhead, Fitz, and Tom. Here we are, back at the Irish Cottage Inn. Another yeah. episode for you. Yeah. Like it or like it or not, we're back. <laughs> we, uh, we got some good stuff coming up on this show. We're going to do uh, Rob Rivera, co-founder of the Black Hole. We'll be on to talk about the uh, history of the Black Hole and the current status of the Black Hole and all that jazz. The uh, Black Hole kickoff party in Oakland. He'll tell us all about that and uh, any of the other stuff they got going on. So that'll be cool. Nice. Uh, wait, hold on. Um, I've just been handed is something here by our um, show producer slash editor and co-host Chuck. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the official format of the show since uh, if you were listening last week, I do need structure. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, this is the exact words. Okay. Intro. Uh, no, it's not time for off the rails and stop <laughs> cursing. Right. That's it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's enough structure for me. And uh, what else we got coming on today? We got uh, we were supposed to have Raider Mikey, but our schedules don't seem to uh, match up. Apparently, he thought we were going to do this at eleven thirty at night his time, which would you know be two thirty in the morning for <laughs> yeah. us. So yeah. I'm going to skip that I, one. I'm not bad anybody else no. while I'm sleeping. That yeah, and, and if, <laughs> and if, if, I, if I'm awake at two thirty, I'm not in any condition to be doing a radio. Yeah, it would yeah. be a fun no, show. <laughs> <laughs> It is Saturday, so who knows? But uh, and uh, we the the next segment is supposed to be Raiders updates. I don't think we have anything to talk about, right? No, no, no. Yeah, nothing going on with them. Nothing going on with the Raiders. Pot, right? you hear anything? Minor. We have a minor. I don't know. I think that they there was a trade or something. Maybe. I'm not. Yeah, possible. Oh, yeah. I heard maybe something. Yeah, I don't know. Well, well I think there's a uh, trade negotiation going on right now. Wasn't it? Gronkowski for Mac, and Mac, <laughs> and Mac agreed to play for ten million dollars a year because he, it's on, it's an honor to play for a Tom Brady and Belichick. Right, but aren't that we getting be. Belichick and Brady in the deal? No. Oh no, we just get Gronk- Gronkowski. That's okay, it. we get Gronk yeah. and a and, third and, round. Pick. Yeah, and a third round pick. Yeah. All right. Mac yeah. has to wear Brady's underwear. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> do, but yeah, but if we get Gronkowski, do we get another tight end that plays more than six games just so for when he's not playing? Ah, I don't know. No. Okay, but I, I think so. What's the what's the reality? He's going to the Browns, and nobody knows the terms of the deal. Or the Bears, the Bears, the Bears. Bears Browns, same yeah, that, thing, isn't the, it? The last thing I seen is they haven't came to. They had, they're trying to negotiate a deal with them. Okay. So, so I so, uh, but according to Raider Nation, it's breaking news. Uh, I hate the team now. I'm never watching the exactly. Raiders again. Exactly. And and and, and Khalil Mack's going. Listen. Until Arden steps up and plays like a no, bad no, no, man no. too. No, 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 no. They're leaving. They're not going to be fans anymore. So when we when we, I, I'm going to screenshot all your stupid Facebook names. <laughs> yes. And when we end up in the playoffs this year, you know what? Like I told, like I told the one guy. I don't know. You know, what? I'm going to call him out. I got him right here. Let's, let's look him up. <laughs> let's look him up. You, you got you to gotta find the idiots who said that we should we should trade Carr and keep Mac. Yeah. Like E.J. Manuel is going to get us anywhere. Yeah, I can't. I, you know what? I can't find him. But you know what? Here's the deal. 
if you're leaving, don't let the door hit you in the ass exactly. on your way out. Yeah. And uh, we'll uh, when when we end up in the playoffs and we see you, you know, going go Raiders again. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna post that right under you because you're <laughs> you're a Khalil Mack fan. Yeah, you're not, you're a, not a Raiders a, fan. Exactly. You know what? Khalil Mack is a Chicago Bear right. or soon to be a Chicago Bear yes. if this works out. So hey, good luck to Khalil Mack. But uh, I'm a Raiders fan, and uh, I hope uh, and uh, yeah, I the, mean the listen, Bears suck. The the current situation of the NFL sucks for people like us that have been following for years. I mean, you know, it used to be a day, an age where, you know, you had your team, you had your favorite players, and those dudes stayed with them basically until their career was over, and then they maybe went to another team to get one more year out of playing. It doesn't help. Piano went to Buffalo, you know. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken with that, I think think he had to greenlight that trade, and I, I think he only greenlighted it because he felt it would make the Raiders better getting Chandler. If I'm, I thought no, I no, no, he, he, no, 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 no. Uh, he he made he made the same mistake that Greg Papa did. Only it was with Al and not Mark. And he and he he voiced his opinion about the Raiders moving to Los Angeles after he'd had a few beers up at the golf club they used okay. to hang out at. That sounds more and, realistic. And uh. You know, a few years later, Al Davis called him up and uh, called him at his house. His wife comes and she's like, Al called. you got to call him. So Because back then, the NFL players used to come home in the off season, And you know what they did when they were home? They worked. Yeah, they went to work. Yeah. So he was, a, he was a, you know, I think a longshoreman or something. Yeah, he worked on the docks. Yeah. He, <laughs> he came home and his, and his uh, wife said Al called. So he called him up and Al was like, hey, you know, thinking about getting this kid. Uh, I forget who it was. He goes, but... Uh, you know, I know you went to college with him. You know, is he? What do you think? Would he, would he be a good fit? And uh, and uh, Fu says, ah, he'd be a great fit, Al. He's like, yeah, you know, good guy, fit right in with the team. He's like, but you know, you're gonna have to give up somebody good for him. And Al says, yeah, you. <laughs> and that was the phone conversation. <laughs> and uh, and 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 Phil's like, yep, well, you know, I spoke <laughs> out against the man and ended up in Buffalo. But it was a couple years after the fact. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. Uh, well, that that story is very similar to what I just said. If you translate it through my, you know, booze infused mind over the years, you know, you, you mess up some details. It's close, yeah. close enough. He liked them. He said he was good. It would help the team. He was happy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know what? Khalil Mack is is a great defensive player. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no doubt. And there's going to be great he, ones after him. Are are we? You know, do we value him more than we value our quarterback? Look, I don't. No. I don't know. I don't. I'm of the opinion that we may have jumped the gun and overpaid Carr a little bit when we when we made that deal. But we hadn't had a quarterback in so long that yes, that and then you have this kid that comes out and and has some shining moments. Um, so I understand that deal. But now you have a defensive player that you know, was supposedly the face of the team that, you know, wants to make more money than the quarterback. And then, you know, what do you do, you know, next season? What do you do after that? Like, where where, where do the Raiders end up? Yeah. Now, yeah. now you know, you, you trade Mac. And, and we're, look, the Raiders weren't out there shopping Mac and, 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 you know, looking for offers. But they got, apparently, and I don't know what the offer is yet, I guarantee you, it's a good one. And I see. I seen two. I seen next year's first round pick and 2020's first round pick. I haven't seen anything, but right. Okay. I mean, there's probably well, two, two first rounds is next year and a year after. Mm-hmm. Right. So. so I mean, you know, look, it's it's a good deal for Oakland. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I'll tell you what, our defense, you know, at least in the preseason, and before you go, oh, it's only preseason, and they play against the, the second string, third string. Listen, how well did our defense look in the last season's preseason against the second string and third string Bad. offense? Terrible. Okay? So this season, defense looks better than our regular season defense did last year with Mac. All right? It's not about one player. It's yeah, about no, a team. And listen, we can, you know, we can read all the stuff that's out there. There's stuff that we don't know about that's going on that went on behind the scenes between Khalil and the, and the organization. We don't know. It, it, we I don't may know never any know. of it. Who cares? Yeah. 
The bottom line is, I, one thing I'm tired of, though, I've seen all the posts out there saying, you know, Gruden better pull his head out of his ass, McKenzie better pull his head out of his ass. You know what? This isn't all one-sided. Clearly, need to pull his head out of his ass, too. If he wants to stay a Raider, he'd be a Raider. He could be a Raider. He'd Absolutely. be a Raider. Hey, if you want to get a raise at work, right, what's the best option for making that happen? Work. Stay home? No. Don't show up for a couple of months? No, you show you're you a know? good employee and that you want to be there, and you know, you're know you a vital part of whatever company organization that you're part of. Yeah, this is not union contract negotiations where the whole where everybody on the team is behind you and you're going to go on strike because you haven't gotten a contract in three. This is one guy who's under contract, right? So this is what happens when you hold out and everybody wanted this deal to happen. I understand. I wanted the deal to happen too, yes. but, it's, but it's not happening. Um, and again, hey, Chicago. Yeah, bye-bye. Right? They're not, it, it, this is not a team that's up and coming right now. This is not a team that, that is a, a threat to the Raiders, right? No. And you're, you're looking at a team that you are going to get a top 10 pick two years in a row from. Right. Uh, it, and your own. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and, and, and I'll tell you what, and I follow college football quite a bit. This next season and the upcoming draft after that, there's going to be some decent players. Hey, I don't follow as far, college as far as football draft at all, goes, could be. but uh, I assume there's some good guys out there. Yeah, there are that are you know fighting to come in. And here's another thing: look, hey, the, these defensive guys, these beasts that are out there now. There's you know a handful of them: Khalil Mack, Von Miller, Donald. Um, you know their game's getting taken away from them anyway. This is going to turn into an offensive game because of the rule changes in the NFL. You can't even tackle anybody anymore. So here's here, bottom line. There are 31 other teams in the NFL, all right, who do not have Khalil Mack on their team and did not have Khalil Mack on their team last season, all right? A handful of those teams made it to the playoffs. Two of them went to the Super Bowl, and one of them won the game without Khalil Mack on their team. <laughs> exactly. All right? And we didn't do any of that no. with Khalil Mack no. on our team. Right. So one guy is not, you know, make or break the team. Exactly. I, you know what? I tell you, as – you know, as somebody who, uh, as a Raiders fan, and looking at, like, you just lose Mac on your defense, there should somebody, somebody should be calling Navarro Bowman because nobody signed him yet. Right. You know, if, if you balked at the little bit of money he wanted before, now you should give him what he wants because it wasn't that much. I agree. And that's a major hole to plug right there. Yeah. You pair him with Markel Lee in the linebacker course. <laughs> Look, but who, knows, you know, who knows what? Who knows what? Rogers Cromartie. We yeah. got you know th this guy can play multiple positions. Yes. But, yeah. but now that you're saving all this money on Mac, there's no reason why you should not be reaching out to, to Bowman right. Well, I, we're gonna find out by four o'clock this afternoon yeah. who's on this team. Yeah. Again, you know? again, though, like you said, you know, uh, drop that dead ass freaking Derek Johnson. Yeah. He, he, the guy's broken down, and and put Bowman in there. I Sign him and put Bowman, Bowman in there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to be fine. There, there's so many options. Like you said, he's one player. He's one defensive player. Is he a beast? Yeah, he's a beast. He's one you of the best, you know, and unfortunately, he's playing for the Bears now. And guess so. what, though? You know who else it, is a beast in the league? Watts from the, from the, the, the Houston Texans. Right. How, how many Super Bowl trophies have they got? Exactly. Yeah. There you go. All right. He's a beast, too. The only one that's got one is Von Miller. <laughs> there you go. I yeah. mean, you know, let's see. Yeah, you know, what are the what are the Rams going to do? They're going to lose. Yeah, I, you know, because I'm not buying into the hype of no. L.A. Rams. No, you know, you're going to go play to an empty stadium every week because nobody yeah. cares about that team in L.A. And and when that's another joke, they had a huge fan base in St. Louis. Right? Yeah. They never had a fan base yeah. in L.A. Yeah. Even when they were there the first time, and, nobody and, cared. And did you see the blueprint of the stadium that St. Louis wanted to build for them? Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was it was beautiful, and they just said, "No, we're going back to L.A." Yeah, you're stupid. Yeah, you're well, stupid. Welcome to Raider Country, mm -hmm. Rams. Duh. And, and you know, I'm not buying into their hype. I'm not buying again the Chargers hype. I'm not buying into that. They every every year, every year, it's this is Philip Rivers' oh, year. Yeah. He's 98 yeah. years old, but he's going to do this it. This is his year. I heard, I, I heard, I heard we're going to trade Mac to San Diego for Joey Bossa. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and a couple picks. 
That's what we're going to do. We're <laughs> trade him to one of our divisional rivals. Yeah, we get Joey Bossa back. He, he's younger, just as good, probably. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> he had more sacks than Mac did last year. Right. <laughs> Makes less money, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, I wish we could hear Chris Potts. You are he's him got like some him. great comments. but You see, this, the whole thing with this trade, everybody's like, oh, you, you know, you don't want it to happen. You're a, fan of the team. You're a fan of the team. You don't want it to happen. But you have to look at it as a team. You know, this puts the Raider, Raiders on better footing for years to come. Absolutely. Um, the Yankees did a similar thing two years ago. They were in the playoff race, decided to sell off three quarters. That's soccer, right? Of, yeah, it's soccer. Okay. They decided yeah. to sell off three quarters of, like, their all-star bullpen. All the prospects they got are playing for the Yankees now, and – the Yankees are playing 700 baseball, yeah. <laughs> and they're set up for the next 10 years. Right. Yeah. I, look, it's you a know? great deal all the way around. Yes. And, but again, you I, know, and, and Cashman was called every freaking name, just like, <laughs> just, just like Reggie and everybody's being right. called. Yeah. Everybody this, wanted him. This guy wants. You know? I don't know what he wanted guaranteed. I don't yeah. know what he wanted. I know he wanted a lot of money. You know, and then you know Donald comes out, gets his you know yeah. huge contract, which. Good, good luck with that, Rams. Exactly. And then, you know, so obviously he wants something along those lines. You know, we've all heard rumors. You know, the Raiders offered him twenty million. He wanted yeah. twenty two or something like that. I. You the know, only thing I've seen is is the Raiders told him, "Look, we're not we're not willing to match what right the yeah. Rams gave Donald." Right. And we're then, not doing that. And from then on, it was just like, okay, and it makes now what sense. do you want to do? And then I. But here's the here's the deal. You got Paul Gunther. Yeah. Coach of the defense. You got John Gruden, head coach of the team. All right. You you got your defensive back coaches. You got your, your line coaches. Um, I have a feeling that these guys looked and saw what they have right now that they've been working with, the yes. players that have showed up, what they've had to deal with, and said, listen, Mark, Reggie, we've got something good here. Um, we'd like to keep Mac." But there's no need for us to bankrupt the team and hinder our future. Of course. To, you know, to give this guy $86 million guaranteed or whatever yeah. he's looking for. Of course. We, we, we got this. Um, yes. Would we like to have him? Absolutely. But are, is, it, is it a do or die thing? No. Mm -hmm. No. We, 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 we've been coaching these guys. We've been watching. We, like, you know, I, I like to think that these guys are not morons, yeah, so the only which, is what, yeah. which is what Raider Nation, half of Raider Nation, it assume, it assumes yes. right now. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Yes. That, that's <laughs> yeah, assume. 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 <laughs> that these guys are, are, are you know, idiots. Well, All right? well, that's what like, I was just going like to say. They, exactly. Like, they know better. Well, yeah, that, that's what exactly, you know, forget. That's the only problem with what you just said is, you know, forget their decades of football, pro football experience. Obviously, the, the fan sites on Facebook know more. Than, right, which is why probably just yeah, go to which them. is why you're working at the gas station exactly. and not coaching an NFL football team yeah. or working as a general manager. Yes, right, because That's you know better. But you just decided, you know, I want to I want to be a dog walker for a living instead. Yeah. <laughs> and no, nothing against dog walkers or people that work at gas stations, but, but I don't listen you're not to running them. My team. You're not running the football <laughs> team. At the end of the day, it's good. I, 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 you know, I wish there was some kind of stat we could could find out about how many people owned a Cleo Mac jersey that bitched and said, "That's it, I'm done with this team." Gruden, he ruined us. Mackenzie ruined. Oh, us. that'll that'll come out over no, the next no. couple of days. You'll be able to gauge that from everybody. You know, but I want I want to compare know. that to the amount of Arden jerseys that are bought by these people. When all of a sudden this kid turns into a defensive stud, yeah. and they're like, "You know what? This guy's the best thing ever to happen to our team. We're Raiders, Raider Nation, Raider yeah. Nation for life." You know what? <laughs> Bruce Irvin is no joke either. He is not. No. And, and 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 moving him to the position that he's in now is uh, look, I uh, there's not much more we can say on this. Um uh, Max I I you going to be a bear, bro? Good. You're dead to me. Yeah. You're a bear. Yeah. You know what? If you come back when your contract's up, then you can be like Charles Woodson and be a hero again. Yeah. Or, but as long as you're a bear, I don't care about Khalil exactly. Mack. Exactly. I'm yeah. a Raiders fan. Yeah. I'm not a – you know what? If Carr leaves tomorrow, I, I'm a Raiders fan. I'm not jumping ship to go follow these these athletes around. No. And listen, uh, and yeah. I'm glad – I was just actually going to sum it up with what you basically you just said. I go, you know – 
my co-host Chuck put it perfectly on one of the Facebook sites where all this is going on, and he, he very eloquently said, <laughs> him. he's a bear now. Exactly. And he, here's just a little, while we're talking about this, here's a little bit, not even just a Raider fans, listen, any, any professional football fans that are listening to us, to all four of you. That th- doesn't include people at this table. The Bears aren't going to be putting up a statue of him next to Butkus. No, no. So I don't know why they're jumping up and down either. I think because they're they're stupid. You know, but the monster the monsters of the midway are not back I'd despite be, uh, despite what they're saying. I'd be jumping up and down too if I was a Bears fan. Yeah, you know, yeah, they have they, nothing they, else. They got yeah. Khalil Mack. Yeah. But nothing else. But, this. but if you don't have anything else to go around them, how many touchdowns is Khalil Mack going to score for you next season? One, maybe. Maybe. But, but if you don't have anybody around them, then... Right. Exactly. You know? But, but here's here's my advice to you people out there. Yeah, I know you're all fans. Fans of whatever team you're a fan of. Here's a little tip. Don't buy any jerseys of these <laughs> players. Because it's the, the National Horror League. They go where the money is. If you're, a, if you're a diehard whatever fan, get a jersey of somebody that spent their career with the team that you loved and admired and is retired or not with them anymore because you can't go wrong. Listen, I always wear my Kenny Stabler shirt, jersey at our games. I don't have to worry about him getting traded because well, he's done. Here's a good thing about the Raiders. We don't retire jerseys. So you can get whatever jersey you want. You like this guy this season? Cool. Next season, you got a jersey with that number on it. You just put a new fa- new, new, name new name plate on it, and you're good to go. <laughs> that's that. That's why I didn't burn mine, like right you now. Half idiots. the other psychopaths out yeah. there. Yeah, like, like you yeah. can't go wrong. Like, I, I got Marcus Allen. I got a Stabler. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the guys. You yeah, don't hey, don't jersey. And, there you and, go. He's never. He's always a Raider. And incredible. and some of you guys that are gonna go the other way. I'm burning my Max jerseys. I I mean. I, there's got to be at least one or two idiots that do that. I'm know? sure some already did. So don't do that. Send them to me because yeah. I'll put a new nameplate on the back of yeah. it. And whoever's number 52 next year, I'll have a jersey. <laughs> 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 and we'll just make up a name and wear it anyway. Who exactly. Right. Care? That's what I did. I have a, Somebody gave me a, a sap jersey, and I just sewed a suicidal patch on and the back of it. There you go. You know? like, With F-U on patch, whatever. We, we can find something. All right. Next. Exactly. <laughs> I got, you know <laughs> what? I got, I got something else to, to, uh, I have a new segment, slamming the sports media. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm I, all I, for I, that. I, I have agree. some thoughts on that myself. Yeah. So, I, everything that I listen to, whether it's podcasts, whether it's the TV shows, whether it's the radio, they're all talking about Donald Penn switching uh, to right tackle uh. <laughs> is like is like try eating with your left hand. No, you idiots. No, it's not like s- becoming left-handed no. the next day. It's like getting out of your bed on the other, other side, side the next day. It's a little awkward at first. Yes. Okay, but it's not like brushing your teeth with the wrong hand or trying to chop up onions with the left hand. It's 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 a little bit. You know, you're being a little bit over the top with that nonsense. I would think so, too. Listen, these guys, are they're athletes. The you guy's know? a veteran, exactly. professional football player. Yeah, it's going to take him a little bit to get used to it, and maybe. It's a, and it's but not going to take him that much. What is it? What has it been, two years since he had to play on the other yeah. side? Yeah. Mean, he, he's done it before. Yeah. This is not, uh, yeah. this is not the, 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 you know, again. Like I said, it's more like getting out of bed on the wrong side. It's yeah. a little awkward, right? And, and, and it doesn't take long. Like you said, these these guys have been playing since, like, first grade. And guaranteed, somebody that's in the NFL now was always the standout player on their team. And if they happen to be a lineman, a great lineman in, like, high school, guess what? They're playing every position on that line. Wherever they're needed, because it's high school, they right. don't have the they don't have drafts. They have this is our yeah, team they for don't four have the years. Luxury of, of we uh, need you on the right side. We need you, and, <clears throat> and it, the same thing goes in college at times too. You got to get switched. It's only a matter of just recently now. So just stop. Yeah, Luani has been traded. Oh, to the Sea Chickens. Yeah. All right. Oh. What are we getting? I don't know. What do we get for him? I don't know. Yeah. Again, apparently the they fifty three. No, I think that... The guys in the know have a reason. 53 men on the roster, 40 suited. We got a million guys right now. Yeah. yeah. It's going to change. Cut. Kowser's cut. Uh, 
you, you know, we're going to get a lot of cuts and a lot of people are going to cry. Again, 53 players. That's all you get. You get 40 suited. Listen, That's for, all you get. Exactly. For you, for all you that have fallen in love and embraced the preseason team, I have, can only say that you're idiots. You're idiots. It, it happens every year. You're going to lose. You might like, you might see a shining star that you like during some of the preseason games. Oh, this guy's awesome. There's a good chance he's going to be gone. Yeah. It's preseason. They're playing against other guys that are going to be gone from their teams. Let's get back to smashing the media. Yes. What do you got, Tom? What do I got is, is you know, like you said, got all these guys in the media. You know, supposedly know-it-alls. They make all this money. Some agent had to get out there, had to get that these guys their money. Right? Yeah. And these agents got to be pretty good to get some of these dopes the money they're making. Absolutely. So, if there's any of you agents out there that need something to do, we'll take some of that money. So, uh, get a hold of us and... Uh, Give us some representation. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you're getting some real dopes to get up on TV and to get on the radio and just talk out of their yeah. asses. Doesn't HBO or Showtime need some football show where we could swear and act like idiots? Yeah, we could totally Listen. talk out of our asses, too. When, when, hey, Raider What about fans? Vice Network? What about Vice? Put us on there. Raider. We can smoke, we can smoke a reefer and talk about football. Yeah. Raider fans. <laughs> Raider fans. <laughs> Football fans, uh, you know, uh, any, you know what, political people, whatever, whatever news you watch. Listen, here's the deal: when somebody gets up on TV and say, sources say, people say, a close source says, first question you should ask is who? Yeah, yeah. Who are you talking about? What source? What people? Who says? Exactly. I, I will take it to heart if one of these idiots from ESPN or FAN or what, or pick your stupid sports network comes out and says, John Gruden says this. Right. Then I'll believe it. Okay, because John Gruden said it. Right. Not and if and if you're lying, you're going to lose your job tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But sources, sources, a source close to the organization, yeah. not even a source in the organization, no. source close to the organization. Yes, that's, the so grounds, that's the groundskeeper. So yeah, that's, that source could be one of us idiots. Use your oh, head man. a little bit. Use <laughs> use your head a little bit. I mean, and stop listening to, like, you know, listen to the local guys, Raider fan. Listen to Vic Tafer. Don't listen to, to Stephen A. Smith. What the hell does he know about what's going on in the Raiders camp? Yeah, he doesn't know. He's he barely knows about anything. He's a basketball guy anyway, so don't right. listen to anything, to anything he has to say about football. Or basketball. Or basketball. For <laughs> I don't even like basketball. Right. I know not to listen to him. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going I'm to listen to Max Kellerman tell me about the Raiders. Right. Shut up. Yeah. You're an idiot. Right. You got guys out there that are local. They're not spouting off this crap. Yeah. Telling you all this garbage, just like uh, it's had, but hit the brakes. Okay, on that note, has anybody seen what was their take on this that they didn't have this beforehand? The new, the Mac News. Well, apparently, their sources uh, <laughs> that were close to the organization <laughs> didn't uh, didn't relay that information. I to mean, them. I would think they would have known this a couple days ago. Right? Yeah. You yeah. Know? They should have got this from their the people that say. Yeah. But no, no. Listen. They hire these guys uh, to because everything's on 24 hours a day now, seven days a week. They hire these guys and they got nothing to talk about. They, they, you know, there's not breaking football news 24 hours no. a day, seven no. days a week. So these guys have to come up with crap. Yeah. And uh, it's all opinions. It's all, but they present it to you like it's, you know, oh, sources again. What sources? Shut the hell up. Yeah. Wait, Tell hold me on. who the source is. I, I, just, I just got a, a text. A source says that there is absolutely no chance of Howie Long coming back to the Raiders this season. I don't believe it. It's from a source. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I heard. Alzado's coming back. Yeah. That's my text. Just It blew up. <laughs> sources close to the organization <laughs> say Lyle Alzado is coming back. That would be interesting because you know what? Yeah, let, let, let's take away the fact that he's not with us anymore. Yeah, I think he's right. lost a lot of weight to play his position, <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. But can you imagine? He would probably just be suspended for, like, years from the he first game. With the, with the rules changes? Yeah. I mean, God almighty, he would be out. Like, yeah. you're out, gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't play in the, the, the no defense, no touchy league. Oh, he would play yeah. In, uh, actually, and any of our great players couldn't think about it. Tatum, Tatum would have been; they, they would have put him in jail. 
<laughs> they, they tried, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Was somebody trying to press charges against them or something? I, I think you're right. Something and, like that? Yeah, in between that and Chuck Knowles' incessant whining, oh, they're criminals. Criminals. The Chuck, criminal Chuck element. Chuck Knowles have a <laughs> anyway. The criminal element. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Meanwhile, me, yeah there, meanwhile, you got Mel Blount pile driving our receivers. That that's okay. Yeah. yeah. We're not gonna go there. Yeah, he probably got his ass kicked for it afterwards, so. Well, I think oh. that's what happened. That that was this, the retribution from when <laughs> they put Swan into the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is what it is. That you you do that, we do it back. Yep. Pansy ass, go fix the part in your hair, Chuck Knoll. All right. <laughs> that's getting a horn. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we got a uh, we got a voicemail. Our first voicemail. Yes, and because it's our first voicemail, uh, Ken, I'm going to be reaching out to you. We got a little something for you, um, so I'll, I'll give you a shout, and we'll uh, we'll let you pick from a handful of prizes, <laughs> and uh, and you can uh, and those will be yours. So let's let's get this voicemail. They're all on. autographed pictures of me and Chuck. Yeah. Yo, Splatterhead and Fitz. Tom, Monster Mash Ken, calling from Jersey South. Love you guys. Love the show. Uh, off the rails. It's great stuff. Off the rails. Off the rails. Off the rails. What is going on in Raider Nation? Let me tell you. Let me just put it like this. I'm a Raider fan. I've been a Raider fan since uh, 1987, you know, 1988. And uh, I've seen some hard, some hard times, you know. I, I think we're going to be okay. I, you know, you got to trust the powers that be. you got to trust McKenzie. you got to trust Gruden. you got to trust... Uh, Davis, uh, and we're just fans. You know, we don't know what's going on behind doors. We don't know the, the dialogue and, and whatnot. All I know is this. I was a fan before Mac was there. I'm going to be a fan long after Mac was there. Uh, I love the Raiders. I love my boys. Uh, and you know what? I think Gruden is going to, is going to be okay. You know, we got Gunther. He's going to make these young bucks, uh, take a step up and, and, and Bruce Irvin's going to have to take a step up. And and we're okay. I, I feel like we're all right. So all those guys out there, all those people that are so-called Raider fans, say, oh, I'm going to burn my matches or I'm going to jump ship or whatever, kick rocks, all right? We don't need to go cheer for the the gold and, and, and red. Go cheer, cheer for those chargers, wherever they city they're from, all right? Real Raider fans are going to be there cheering no matter who's playing and where they're playing. And whatever the score is at the end, we're still going to be fans. Uh, I, I love what you guys are doing. Uh, keep up the good work. I'm going to keep calling in every week. You're going to get a call from me, Monster Mash Ken. Love you guys. Thanks for the beer the other week in the Dallas uh, Dallas bar. <coughs> Dallas, <coughs> everybody else, go Raiders, Raider Nation for life. Love you guys. It's time for the truth with Tom. Uh, my, hold on, let me let me get comfortable. <laughs> I like to put my feet on my. I, I need to take it all in. I need to take it all in. What am I going to say today? <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> I don't know. Um, the only thing I could say out there to uh, Raider Nation on the truth with Tom is, I don't know. I would say just wait and see how this plays out. Pick up a stud defensive end. That's the next Khalil Mack in 2019. Arden Key could turn out to be the next Khalil Mack this year. Uh, 2020, another stud somewhere else, you know. Next year, we're looking at a draft pick around where we picked this year based on, I'm guessing, what our record's going to be. So we should be in the middle of the pack somewhere. So, you know, patience. I think it sucks as much as everybody else, but I, now i got a Mac jersey I don't have nothing to do with. Now it's going to hang in my freaking closet. I think I'll just give it to the cat, let the cat sleep on it. But, uh... Because it's useless to me. So um, now you got to get you know, Chuck to, to, to sell on a new name. Not only that, now I got to lose weight to fit into my Tim Dr Tim Brown jersey. So you know, douchebag Mac and everybody else involved. Thanks, jerk offs. It cost me more money. But uh, that's truth of time, man. Uh, be patient. Let's see where this all goes. You know, 
You know, all you people out there screaming we should trade Carr and keep Mac, you're idiots. You know, <laughs> uh, because, you know, you, you, you want to be 5-11 and 11 every year, and hey, that's the truth of Tom, man. Just see how it plays out, you know. Scream, yell. If you're going to burn Mac jerseys, burn them, but make sure you post that crap on our page on Facebook so uh, we get to see it. Um, if you have tickets you suddenly don't want because, you know, you're making reservations to go to Chicago. Now we'll take them also. So, uh, mail them to <laughs> so uh, you know. Just email uh, us at that. Yeah. MC Blitz at MervsFanCave.com. Yeah. We'll take your tickets, yeah. your jerseys, yeah. uh, whatever. We'll, we'll take everything. We'll take whatever you got, man. If you're not a Raiders fan anymore, God bless. Freaking Bears need you. <laughs> you know, you're already you're already used to rooting for a five and eleven team every year, so it's not going to be that much of a change for you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, good luck out there, peeps. Hey, what's up? You're listening to the Fan Club Blitz with Splatter Head and Fitz, posted by the NJ Black Hole. We are here at the Irish Cottage in Hamburg, New Jersey. To be part of the Black Hole, it's either in your blood or it's not. It's in my blood. We have to be sort of intimidating. You, you can't have any other way at no point. It's like a huge party, only that is silver and black. We're the most notorious fans in the league by far. Love us or hate us. All right, so we have Rob Rivera on the line. Rob is the uh, a co-founder and the president of The Black Hole, which uh, anybody listening to this has a pretty good idea what the black hole is, but we're going to let Rob kind of explain uh, what's what's the history of the black hole as it stands now, Rob. The history of the black hole, let me see. Uh, well, first of all, hey, Chuck and Fitz, how's it going, guys? I appreciate you uh, having me on the on the show today. Uh, I would love to share the history of the black hole, but it would take quite a while, so I'm going to give you the nickel tour Perfect. if that's all right. That's you great. Like <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you know, back in 1994, man, uh, four buddies and myself in a room in Hayward, California, watching the early games before the Raiders would come on in the, in the afternoon. This is still when the team was in Los Angeles. Um, but there were rumors about them potentially coming back to Oakland. Um, them rumors started to get a little hot and heavy, and as we're watching some games in the 94 season, uh, one of the games we were watching was the Cleveland Browns in the morning game as we was getting prepped up with some with some shots and some beer getting ready for the 1 p.m. West Coast game which would be our Raiders that day and uh, so we're taking a look at the dog pound and they're having a good time and, and we're talking about the potential move back to Oakland and the rumors and you know one thing led to another and we said you know what guys if ever um, this team does return why don't we do something like the dog pound why don't we get our wild and crazy guys together and and you know sit in the end zone and draw attention to ourselves and have a good time with it and so 1995 uh came around the team came back to oakland and we went in recruiting mode um we started to look at who we were going to have to be a part of this thing to kick it off and uh we, we knew that the first year back the stadium was still in the old com- old configuration uh to where you know you can actually see the oakland hills from the from the uh, from the batter's box, which now, years later, you have Mount Davis there, but uh, that wasn't going to be completed uh, uh, totally completed until the '96 season. So we decided to really put it into full effect in 1996. Uh, we had a contact at Oakland Football Marketing Association, and we all decided to get our seats in the first row of the south end zone. The funny thing is, guys, is that they didn't want to give us those seats. We were all PSL holders and season ticket holders, and they had said at the time that those seats are um, undesirable seating, and they would keep the first three rows of the end zones only for walk-up. Well, us being the type of personalities that we were, we said, you know what, that isn't going to work for us. You know, we, (laughs) we... we want those seats, and we want Section 105, and we want Row 1, and, and we want it now. So uh, after some back and forth, they decided to make an exception, and we got 20 some guys together in the first row, the south end zone, Section 105, and everything started to go in motion. Um, the funny story that goes along with why we picked that area is because the previous season, the Raiders were playing the uh, Colts, and Napoleon Kaufman had got a kick return. He had ran it all the way back, and 
uh, a partner in mine walking around the stadium decided to sneak down to the first row of the end zone. Uh, there was a couple of openings there. One was a, uh, a seat still in place, and the other was no seat. So for some reason, it had been removed. So I got in my catcher's stance with that, you know, in that in that seat that was supposed to be a seat, but there was no seat there. And uh, we were there about five minutes, and Kaufman scores. He jumps in the end zone. He jumps right into my arms. I <laughs> you not. It was unbelievable. Uh, we walked out to the parking lot that day, and we said, guys, we know where we're going to do this thing next year. And, and that's where it was going to be. All the guys didn't believe me. You know, they thought I was full of it. But the next morning in the, in the paper, uh, front page of the paper there, there goes Kaufman in my arms and uh, my phone started ringing off the hook so um, that's actually how we decided to pick section 105 after that uh, we, we got the guys together and, and, and then in 1996 we just hit it hard uh, we we, uh, we came out with these uh, shirts that said the black hole big bold letters in front of us we started creating effigies of players on the other team and kind of beating them and throwing them around <laughs> the end zone we started putting some some war paint on, which at the time really wasn't done, um, um, other than Violator in Los Angeles. It was a pretty, pretty rare thing to see anybody with war paint. So, you know, we just would, would do a couple streaks on the side of our cheek, and that started to evolve, and one thing led to another, and after many years, you kind of see what it's like now, but in the early days, it was a pretty rare scene. So, um, you know, we we decided to stand up for four quarters. Uh, a lot a lot of people didn't enjoy being in that type of atmosphere, so they moved out. But then a lot of people decided, you know what, I like that mosh pit type of feel, and uh, and those types of cats started to move into the section. Um, man, years and years after that, uh, we started to organize. We started to have members and chapters and events and and and, and fun activities and. You know, now here we are in 2018, and uh, and we and we're still enjoying the ride. You know, hopefully we have at least a couple more years left in Oakland here. I, I know we have this season. Who knows about next or the year after that? But we're hoping that we 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 can take this thing as far as we can. So that's 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 kind of the history, uh, kind of taking you to where we're at now. There's obviously a whole lot of fun stories. Some we can talk about, some we can't. That <laughs> that has you know taking us to where we're at today but the bottom line man it's 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 just been a fun ride we've got to meet a lot of cool people from all around the world um it's it's just been a, a lot of fun tons of camaraderie good times and just true brotherhood you know wow that's <clears throat> awesome man that's Very. that's that's really cool um and then you know so going from you know a group of uh you know crazy raider fans and uh section 105 you know how did it take off from there to where now what what do you what do we have 20 chapters uh, across the globe right now is that where we are yeah we have 20 chapters guys and um and uh you know i i i you know i'm not pulling your leg when i say man we've probably got a waiting list of almost 200 you know we have so many chapters in waiting um uh a lot of them we don't even have time to get back to unfortunately guys if you're listening apologies but you know we're just we're just we're we're we're, uh we're doing the best we can and figuring this thing out as we go so um you know man uh yeah yeah you know a lot of good people like yourself and others have 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 started chapters you know have taken our way of being a fan which you know believe it or not man we're 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 uh we're we're good people a lot of a lot of family oriented people uh man we do give the other team hell i mean that's no question about it uh but as far as just being good passionate fans man we truly kind of check that box you know so um yeah you, you know we're rolling them out we uh just recently launched a, a seattle chapter and a tillary cat uh county chapter uh international we have an australia chapter mexico city chapter germany chapter um uh, uk chapter and onward and onward so um you know we're we're uh you know we're hoping before season's end that we can launch about another 30 chapters um if we if we find the time to be able to do that the main thing is we, we want to do it right. We, we want to make sure good people are involved. And, you know, we want to make sure that wherever people, uh, you know, congregate and call themselves black hole, that it's a true extension of us. If anybody ever has ever been to our tailgate, they know that as soon as they walk in, they feel like they've been there forever. They feel like they've known everybody forever. And we're proud of that. You know, we truly have the, um, the Aloha spirit man, and people come and they eat for free and they drink for free and they, and they walk out 
out of there with a ton of hugs and memories. And, you know, we, we just want to kind of duplicate that wherever we're going. And I got to tell you, man, we're proud of our chapters because they're truly, uh, you know, they're truly representing our, our way of being fans in their neck of the woods. Um, and they're doing it very well. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, that that's really important to us. And even when we were, you know, deciding, when we were just an unaffiliated group of knuckleheads that, you know, out here in Jersey supporting the Raiders, when we were, you know, trying to figure out our path forward, that's really important to us that that, that camaraderie is there and that it's, uh, you know, that everybody that walks into our spot uh, when it's game day, man, they feel like they've they've known us forever. So we try and really, you know, I- express that black hole, you know, feeling for everybody. And that was that was one of the you know main reasons that that we reached out to you guys because we just felt like it was the it was the right spot for us to be. Well, we we appreciate that, and and that's extremely humbling. And it also, um, it, you know, man, it just feels good, man. You, you know, feel good. It feels good, guys. That um, you know that 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 you folks 3000 miles away would have the confidence, uh, to connect with us and, and, and want to, um, you know, represent and, and have the confidence in us that, um, you know, that you guys are, you know, um, have made the right choice. And, you know, hopefully you guys feel that way. It seems like your chapter is having a lot of fun. I love, uh, I love your home base. It seems like your sports bar just really goes out of their way to, you know, make sure you guys are taken care of. And, um, and, uh, you know, with our sponsorship from Corona, they're always doing the best they can to support as well. So, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of fun to be had and, you know, we hope that, that you guys are definitely enjoying it. You know, uh, we're having a blast, man. We're really, we're really happy to be part of the black hole. So, um, so tell us what, uh, what you got going on for the, uh, the, uh, big season kickoff party that you, that you do every year in Oakland. I, I'm, I'm heartbroken that I can't be there. You know, it's a shame, but like I, I've told you before, my, my, I have a daughter in Florida and a son in, in San Diego. And so our, our, our trips are really planned around what, you know them at this point but i will be out there in november for that chargers game so uh, i'm looking forward to that wish i could be at the season opener but we'll be there in spirit and uh and then murph from uh raiders fan radio and murph's fan cave he's going to be representing the new jersey chapter for us because uh, he's flying our flag out there this uh this weekend or this monday awesome so. awesome well check it out man um He's going to the event Saturday night. He's he, he going to be there. He doesn't get to Oakland until game day. So oh, I know oh, okay, he's actually okay, he's, he, he's right. traveling on work. But uh, <laughs> but we got a lot of people listening that that either are going to be there all weekend and maybe for you know maybe they live under a rock and for some reason they don't know about the party and uh, <laughs> we want to make sure they go to the right party too oh man well let me tell you man um our party is definitely the right party man we you know we've been doing this for years and we've got it really really pinned down um you know we've we've done it at a few years at the oakland hilton we've done it at the craneway we've done it at ricky's we've done it all over um you know and last year we took it to the new brand new radisson hotel in oakland um and uh man that 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 partnership with them has really really blossomed to where they're just really ecstatic to have us back again this year last year's event went so well that um that man everybody that attended all i was hearing was people saying man i can't wait until next year's so this year we're doing it even better and 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 kind of what it is is that um look we're gonna have great entertainment let let me just start there we have a band a 12-piece band funky latin orchestra with some of the top musicians from santana uh the whispers um coldplay on and on and on and on and on and so um we're getting these guys together. Uh, they're a funky Latin orchestra band, so they're going to have everything from old school to salsa to just all sorts of stuff, and it's 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 just going to be tremendous. Uh, we have some other special per- performers. Four Dub is going to be in the house doing their thing. Um, we have raffles and giveaways. We have uh, former Raider uh, former Raider legends um, that are going to be in the house. Um, I'll give you uh, I'll give you three. We were going to 
surprise folks with who's in attendance, but I'll give you I'll give you three that uh, just confirmed today 100. percent You know, we're we're t- well. I'll give you two. Um, I'm going to hold back the third because that's right. a big surprise. All right, but, all right. Uh, but you know, we're going to have the great Art Toms uh, that's going to be inducted into the black hole. We're going to have the great Jerry Robinson that's going to be inducted into the black hole, and then there's others that I'm holding back. So uh, just know that that there's going to be Raider legends in the house. Guys, when we have these events, guys like the Jeff Barnes and the Rod Martins, who've been inducted in years past, they come out, they party with the fans, man. A lot of pictures, a lot of hugs, a lot of dancing, a lot of smiles, a lot of autographs, just a lot of good stuff going on. Um, We got, uh, 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 I know I mentioned freebies, but we got some really cool co-branded Corona black hole freebies that we're going to be giving out that people are just going to uh, be ecstatic over and you know just a lot of a lot of uh, uh, energy a lot of excitement Raider fans from far and wide it starts at four o'clock it ends at midnight this is at, um, in their art their outdoor courtyard and it's in september this time of year it's beautiful so it's going to be a beautiful night uh with the lighting and the band and great djs we have uh, a special guest dj uh that's going to be in the house he happens to be the president of our philadelphia chapter uh and, Ooh, DJ, and mike. dj mike and mike's one of the top rated djs on the east coast he, he's, he used he's to play awesome for the dude. awesome dude man one of my best friends and i love him to death so mike is going to take the turntables for a little bit and do his thing uh you know uh from here to there and and then we got our regular dj that's going to be doing his thing and uh just 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 a whole lot of fun and again it starts at four and just picks up steam as it goes uh you know towards the towards the evening the band will do its first set and then there'll be the inductions and the band will do its second set the dj will bring it home and in between and around there'll be announcements and shout outs and freebies and giveaways and surprises uh there'll be corona girls out there and and just just a whole lot of whole lot of super fans and a fun time so um it truly is not to be missed for anybody that's going to be in town it's saturday we always do it the saturday before the first home game um just so happened that uh that usually it's a saturday before a sunday but this year it's a saturday before a monday so unfortunately there's probably a lot of -of out-of-towners that are getting there on sunday that uh that if they would have known about this earlier they probably would have planned to get there a day early but those that are going to be in town make sure you check it out um you can either get your tickets at the door uh, but i would suggest you get your tickets in advance for those getting tickets in advance um we do have some extra gifts that we're going to give their way so um they can go directly to 2018 2018 black hole season opener dot eventbrite.com leave out the www that'll take you some someplace else for some reason it kind of messes up the messes up the link there so just go directly 2018 black hole season opener dot eventbrite bright to spell b-r-i-t-e eventbrite Dot com and uh, you can get your tickets there online and uh, or just you know go to our Facebook page or our, or, or our informational pages and and you guys be able to see it there so um, yeah it's going to be a great time and 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 we're looking forward to it right on and we'll we'll put those links up when we uh, when we post this episode on Thursday so those links will be sounds, there sounds good and you you know what too also um if you have any of your uh, chapter members that you know are going to be at that event make sure they find us find myself find 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 cisco kid find the guys that you know track us down uh because we do uh for those chapter representatives that are going to be there we'd like to pull them up on stage give them a shout out you know and uh and give them some gifts that we have for them so um you know hopefully uh you you got a couple guys that are going to be in the house if they are make sure they they contact us all right all right i think we got we got one or two that are still seeing if they can work it out but uh if they if they do work it out with with work and everything we will definitely 
definitely have them uh, get in touch with you or Cisco or uh, or even a lot of our guys know Mike too. So if they see him, they can. Uh, there you go. They can track. They can track you guys. Absolutely, down that way. absolutely. Always in good hands with Mike. That's for sure. Absolutely. I don't know though that that Christmas <laughs> game on Philly, man. I had to say no mas on the tequila. <laughs> I was, it was. Yeah. It was a little cold oh, out boy. there. It was a little cold it out was, there on yeah, that uh, Christmas, <laughs> and that tequila was keeping me warm until I realized oh, I was having man. a little trouble standing still. So. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> they, they were awesome, though. Let me tell you, I, when I got to Philly, Chuck Chuck was uh, was there before me. When I got there, I never met Mike. I was in that tailgate for about three seconds, and if I, I felt like I knew the guy for thirty years. It, 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 unbelievable guy. It, the whole group, they were. It was like I was one of the family. I, I wasn't even there for five minutes. Yeah, uh, unbelievable group of guys. Yep. Well, man, you, that's Philly. You are that's one Philly, of the family. Man. That's how it is, right? We we talked Absolutely. to we've talked to a few other uh, clubs from some of these you know dumb teams. We talked to a <laughs> Chiefs club uh, rolled into their rolled into their little uh, Chiefs voices. den out in Queens, and we talked to a, a lady who runs a Cowboys club. And you know these people they don't do anything other than just get together and watch the games. Um, there's no off season stuff. There's no big parties, and you talk to you know. Black Hole Chapters, you talk to Booster Clubs, you talk to any Raider fans, and any excuse we get to throw on the silver and black and go out and have a good time, whether we're, you know, doing a charity event or we're just having a barbecue and, you know, beating on a Chiefs pinata or whatever, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're down all year long. There's always yeah. something going on, you know. We're, we're, we're at our club, you know couple times we're here for the podcast every week we're here yeah. we're, all, we're all getting divorced that's how yeah. much we're here <laughs> <laughs> yeah our football season has turned into 52 weeks a year you know the, oh, the wives are cool with the, the 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 16 weeks and then all of a sudden <laughs> all of a sudden we're, we're 52 weeks a year here we are but, but, you know uh, it was distressing about that that chief spar that chuck mentioned they don't even like it's all like word of mouth the guy was kind of like well yeah the game's on if you want to come watch it we're here kind of just like you know what he gave like us nothing. you know what he gave us when we were there rob no. i don't know if you heard i get heard any of our uh, recaps <laughs> no, no, he no pulled, please he, please fill me in man i, I missed that one he trust pulled, me you really he, don't want to hear this but you're he have poured it. us a cucumber beer. And <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is not us. This is this is this is and, Chuck uh, and our other guy who couldn't make it. Well, tonight. Tom said, "Well, I'm going to go get a cucumber beer too." Because I went up to the bar. I said, "Hey, what did Chiefs fans drink?" And he said, "Here, <laughs> it was a cucumber. It was very refreshing." And uh, Tom says, "I'm going to go get one too." And he comes back with something different. I said, "What's that?" And he just laughs. He says. Toasted marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, wait, wait, there's got to be a joke, right? You tell me, no, tell me you guys no. are joking. That's a real thing, man. That's what they drink oh, at the Kansas man. City Chiefs bar. That's why we stay away oh, from those places. Boy. At that point, I was looking for a back door to run out of, but yeah. there wasn't one. But we we rolled in we rolled in there deep. We had a good time. So uh, so you got and then obviously first tailgate of the year. You know, outside of preseason, you know, first regular season tailgate of the year. That's got to be you know that's all always got to be huge too so uh you guys know where you're going to be you guys are always in the same spot or do they move you around a little bit you, you know man we uh, we were in the same spot for 20 20 plus years until they kind of they kind of jerked us a little bit and kind of moved us from here to there uh uh, about a year ago. So, so, you know, we go out there and, you know, we know we're going to be somewhere on the island. We don't know if it's going to be up close or further towards the freeway, but trust me, believe me, regardless of where they allow us to, to set up shop, once it's set up, uh, the party's on and, 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 you know, those that come by, uh, make sure you eat and make sure you eat good because there's going to be a lot of pounding of the cold ones going down, a lot of Coronas, a lot of Modellos, and just, just, just constant, constant, constant party and uh, probably shots every 15 minutes uh, with those that that dare to partake and and uh, and just a lot of tequila going down the hatch and a lot of fun and you know the thing that we're proud of most though is is that uh, with with as large of a fan organization as we have. Have, which, I mean, man, you go by our tailgate and you can't even move. There's just tons and tons of people. You know that we've never had one instance of trouble, not one instance of 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 of, of any sort of episode that would just make you say, man, you know what? 
uh, that this isn't for me. Everybody is smiling. Everybody's having a great time. And for that, for, for that five hours of tailgating, everybody are his brothers and sisters. And you know what, man, if you come up with another jersey, we're going to give you a hard time. But you know what? We'll bring you by the barn. We'll have a shot and a beer ready for you, too. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a it's a great time. And again, a whole lot of food, a whole lot of drink, a whole lot of good people. And uh, you really just can't beat it. It's it just it's just it's one of a kind. And, and it's pretty amazing. Now, that's awesome. And I just want to uh, I'm gonna make a little announcement for the out of state people that are going into, you know, Oakland for maybe the first time. Um, listen, folks, just because it's legal now, stay away from that California green if you ain't used to it. Yeah. Especially, when, <laughs> especially when you're out there drinking that tequila and those yeah, beers. That's not going to be a good Stay idea. away from that stuff. you got a football game to go to. Just just leave that alone and uh, <laughs> get, some, get some experience in you before you start going down that road. But yeah, no sleeping in the seats, man. That's no right. Sleeping in the seats. That's right. <laughs> that's just oh, my little PSA. That was my PSA for it's the out of town. Yeah. That was my first, first time out of town going to California. Um, and don't say Cali when you get out there either. We don't like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be in town uh, in November, you said, huh? Yep. I'll be in town November 11th uh, for the okay. for the. Charge Chargers game. I'll be up there with my son and my wife, and uh, he's probably a little disappointed about that. You know, I mean, he's he, he's in the Navy. He's a, a rescue swimmer in the Navy. He's uh, but he turns 21 on the 11th. So he, his only rule for me this year was whenever we go to a game, make sure it's after September 11th. So uh, he, 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 now his, uh, well, now his mama's coming. So he, <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing to me, Dad?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, that's all good, man. Well, hopefully you guys, uh, you know, make sure you contact us. You know, prior to coming out, you know, we we want to make sure that you guys are taken care of you know so. uh, we we will we will definitely be in touch i'm actually my old band is playing a show in uh pomona the night before and the only reason i'm playing that show is because it was a free flight to get out to california <laughs> i don't even play anymore and i was like you know what yeah i'll play fly me out there and uh and then as soon as i'm done playing on saturday night which i'll be done probably you know 10 30 11 o'clock we're jumping in the car and we're heading straight up to oakland so we'll be there bright and early for the tailgate and uh looking forward to hanging and meeting all you guys so um the last awesome. th the last thing we we like to do on on uh on these interviews is uh this was this was an interesting week um a lot of raiders fans were jumping off of the ledge um you know first with the with the the trade news and then then with cut week and you know some people i was trying to talk off of a ledge some people i was just trying to give a little extra shove like go ahead jump like <laughs> i can't take it anymore but so this was an interesting week. This we we were calling it the day Raider Nation lost its mind on Saturday, and not, obviously not everybody. But so what we like to do is just get all of our guests to just give a uh, you know a message to Raider Nation, and uh, you know any anything you want to say, positive, you know, negative, wherever you want to go. Just what, what do you have to say to Raider Nation as we head into this season? Well, Chuck. And Fitz, here's my here's my thought about this whole thing, man. And 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 it's probably going to be an unpopular thought in the Raider Nation, but it's my thought, and I'm I'm, I'm sticking to it. There you go. You know, man. Um, look, I'm kind of old school, right? And yet, you know, man, I remember when when a man's handshake used to mean something, you know. And uh, I remember when, um, you know, when when you know when a player would play the game strictly for the love of the game and also for um, for their teammates, you know. And I, I just have a real hard time nowadays with with the holdouts. I have a real hard time. You know, look, even if you're going to be franchised, whatever the case, um, you know, if you have an opportunity to get on that field and work out with your squad, with your with your brothers, you know, I, look, look, I'm a big Stanford football fan, right? Because, you know, Stanford is right down the street from where I live. Right. And, um, you know, man, uh, look, you know, when McCafferty decided not to play in that bowl game because he's prepping for he's prepping for the pros, man, that just rubbed me the wrong way. You know, it was like, man, I just all of a sudden just lost a whole lot of whole lot of love for this dude. 
And uh, because, you know, man, what makes you better than the other, you know, 52 guys on your squad that are out there sweating and hitting the sled and working hard, you know, and I put, put myself in their position. Yeah, they they probably want you to get paid, but also they're trying to win. They're, they're trying to win and they're trying to win now. And so, you, you know, um, personally, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in the minority here and please forgive me, guys. Take it easy on me. But. I'm glad he's gone. I'm I'm glad he's gone. If if he doesn't want to be in camp, and if he doesn't want to be working, look, um, you know, regular Joes like myself have a difficult time enough taking your family to the game, taking it, you know, you, you know buying season tickets for yourself. Um, so it's a privilege. Um, it's a privilege to be in the NFL. And yeah, I'm all for players getting paid. But you know what? If you if you if you have a contract or you have a promise that after this after this tag or however the situation is going to work out with, and I'm not just talking about Mac, I'm talking about any player, um, you know, live up to what you're supposed to live up to. And hopefully the team on the other side will take care of you when that, when that time comes. Um, not, I'm not sure how many more millions people need to really have a happy life. Um, but I got to tell you what he was already making was pretty, uh, would surely give me a happy life. So, um, you know, uh, somewhere along the line, contracts just, just, just really weren't contracts anymore. And now it's almost, it's almost, uh, mandatory by the players themselves that when your contract is up, when it gets close, you're sitting out and you're not going to camp and you're going to bitch and moan. And, um, yeah, you, you know, we know that his contract situation was different, that he was facing a different scenario. Um, but, but, uh, but the point is, is that, look, man, this is, uh, this is football. And if you're playing it just for, or just for business purposes, then uh, you know what? I'm not watching the game for business purposes, man. I'm watching the game for for some smash mouth, for some love of the game, and guys that just really want to try to win win games. And so that's my take on it. Uh, for the Raider fans that are that are pissed off, hey, I respect your opinion. Um, hopefully you can respect mine and, uh, and let, let's all just focus on what we got now and the guys that want to be here and, and let's make it happen, you know? So excited about the season still, man. I, 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 I truly am. So we'll see what happens. Yay, man. You know what? This, when this episode gets released, we are going to be some of the most unpopular, oh, yeah. uh, Raider fans out there too, because I took me about 30 seconds once the news broke. And Murph, I'm not even going to edit this part out because it needs to be said without any bleeps or horns. But my response was, F- him, he's a bear now. That's <laughs> yeah. look, you know. I mean, it's obviously it's obvious that you only cared about the money because if you wanted to win, you wouldn't be going to the Bears, right? Um, so hey, it is what it is. I'm completely done talking about Khalil Mack and I understand some some fans you know they're fans of players I, I'm a fan of a player as long as he's wearing silver and black um, yeah. once he once he's off playing somewhere else I you know that's why I don't play fantasy football <clears throat> I can't sit on my couch and and with good conscience root for Philip Rivers to win because he was drafted on, you know what I mean I, I can't do yeah, it I'd I have I'd that. have all Raider fans on my team and then you know <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, we'd be in dead dead last. Yeah, exactly. you know what? I'm the same way. I just can't get I can't get myself to do it. You know, you know. But it takes us back to last year with 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 uh, Donald Penn, right? Right. And uh, look, man. You know, he he sat out the entire training camp and. Look at the crappy start our, our, you know, our offensive line got off to last year. So, you know that 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 chemistry is important, man. Those guys in the trenches, man. You know, you know, working, you know, getting on the same page, man. All that stuff is important. Now, obviously, offensive line is more important with that, you know, for that chemistry factor than a defensive uh, player that just pins his ears back. But I just think, man, you know, you know, man, if he was walking around, I could just, I could just. I could just, uh, you know, I could just see people feeding off that, that you're here, you're, you're working and your situation isn't fully taken care of yet, but you're rolling up your sleeves with us. That's right. gotta be uplifting, man. So, Absolutely. you know, yes. and to the people that are, that are saying, Hey man, you know, what's it going to do to the locker room? Blah. Listen, the man hasn't been in the locker room since December. Right. So uh, he hasn't been, he hasn't been on the team. So there's been a new locker room chemistry going on. Yeah, Marshawn you know? stepped up. They got Carr. You know, they, they got they have other leaders to step up. It, listen, I'm I'm the same as, as you, Rob. 
I, I've had you know back and forth with these guys and these these Raider websites, and I'm just I'm I'm stuck in '70s football. I'm the same way. I'm like, you go to a team. I get it. If you spend 12 years with a team and you're done, and then your team releases you, and you go to another team for like one year just to get one more year of playing. I could deal with that, but I can't deal with this. I'm with a team for two seasons. Now I'm going to leave to go to another one because they're going to pay me a couple million dollars more. I, I, right. I, can't, right. I can't get on board with that. Yeah, there's no loyalty <laughs> anymore. And I guess it's one of these yeah. things that we're yeah. going to have to get used to because this is just the nature of the beast now. But it I'm is, not I'm not going to cry about it when it happens with these guys. Look, I say good for the Raiders. They made a smart move. Not paying that man, you know, 20, you know, $90 million guaranteed. Plus, we're, we're probably going to get two top tens. Um, you know, what are you going to do? Their, they, de- their defense in preseason without him was better than their defense all well, last season. I agree. Yeah, they sure seem to be flying around, man. I think Gunther's got something going there. Of so. course. We love him. That's, we'll, my, we'll see. that's my MVP so far, Gunther. Yeah. I'm waiting to see what happens, <laughs> but but that's, that it, was man. my prediction, man. Gunther was going to be the biggest move on this, on this season, so biggest impact anyway. Um, right, right. Well, you know what, man? It was an honor to have you on, and like I said, this this show will be released uh, Thursday morning, and so Thursday we'll start blasting it. You guys can start blasting it, and we'll get as many, you know, we'll get it out there as well as we can, and hopefully anybody going to Oakland is going to know where to be. Um, Sounds like a plan, brothers. Sounds like a plan. All right. It was really good talking to you, and uh, if I don't, I'm sure I'll talk to you before then, but if not, I'll see you in November. Hey, that sounds good, guys, and you guys have a... um a great weekend coming up here in a few days. Great rest of the week. Great, great weekend and a great Monday night watching the game, man. Yes, you at ten thirty at night for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be we'll be watching it in bed. Sitting up. I'm trying to I'm trying to yeah, yeah. I'm trying to weasel that Tuesday morning off, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still got some days to work that out, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for the call, and, and uh, I I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, All right. Anytime, thank you, Rob. Thanks for coming on. All right. You take care, guys. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah! Keep it going. Keep it going. They say the black hole is really rowdy, and it is. I mean, even for Raider fans, but to us, it's a family. Black hole, I will never die. It's a symbol of passion. It's a symbol of the greatness of the Raiders. We're, uh, by the way, we're officially off the rails now. <laughs> not yet. Listen, I have a it's, piece of paper that says we are not off, we the are rails. off the rails. <laughs> we had the truth with Tom. Now we're off the rails. Okay, good. I love being off the rails. Listen, are we off the rails for real? We are okay. I don't know. Yeah, Hit listen. It. I get. I, I, I'm looking for structure, people. I'm, I need structure. Hit it. All right, listen. For you, for those of you that listen, somebody to get me a Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that was my impersonation of President Donald J. Trump. <laughs> uh, all right, for, I mean, listen. We, for new new listeners, you know, we're we're in New Jersey here. We're up in Northwest New Jersey, country area. You know, we have we have farms, we got trees. You know, it's not like you know, cityish. We're not too far from the city. But listen, I love where we're from. I love the area. But I gotta say, some of the people, a lot of the people, drive me crazy up here. <laughs> you know, you see them. They they got their their country clothes on. You know, their their camouflage, their country shirts. I'm country. You know cowboy boots on their shirts you over here i'm talking about you know like, like listen we're we're not like those city folk we're we're, we're country we're country meaning you know there, there's a meaning to that like you know we're we're like family we're oriented you know we're we're good people we're wholesome you know what these mother half of these people would shoot you if you walked I, in there i was gonna say these mother <laughs> you try to pull out of a parking lot onto route 23 they will speed the up to, to not even let you get into traffic <laughs> yeah we're, we're country we're like family they i mean and then i don't know listen i, I didn't grow up in sussex county so maybe if one of our listeners did and they can let us know is part of the driving test in sussex county like do you have to master tailgating and high beams because if you <laughs> happen to get in front of one of these <laughs> holes that won't not, let you in they're not tailgating 
Oh, they're not? What are they doing? Well, they're NASCAR fans. Oh, that's yeah. oh, they're okay. drafting. They're drafting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, God almighty, they're up your ass. And listen, turn your turn your mad lights, your, your high beams off. I mean, there's no street lights up here. So, like, when you're approaching the other car at night and your high beams are on, blinding somebody. Stop it. I mean, I don't get it up here. It, it, it drives me crazy. But we're country. We're all one. We're, we're not like those city folk. I am. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> I am too. Listen. Yeah. No, listen. I'm, I'm a beach kid, man. I don't know. Listen, I love... I'm tired I, of getting ticks on me. I love yeah. all of it. I love the whole country. I lo- I'm just as comfortable in Manhattan as I am in the country or at the shore. But stop with this... <laughs> you, you don't live in a country song where you and your... <laughs> tractor like <laughs> if you want to be that way then act that way hey, he's that, got that, a riding mower he does have a riding mower. <laughs> but my point being you know what you want to act that way uh, be that way you say you that way act that way you know what let the person out you, you can pull out you're not in that much of a hurry it's it's uh, it's almost bumper to bumper traffic to begin with all you're doing is you're you're stopping yourself from getting five seconds ahead of where you would have been yeah i mean I yeah, like these idiots me. in the morning when I'm driving and they pass me on the right, speeding up. Yeah. Like, I to listen, go into traffic. You know why I'm not going fast? I can see what's in front of me. Yeah. A, a dump truck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you're gonna get in front of me and then you're gonna be stuck there forever. Yeah. Where, where, where are you going? Is that is that going up the mountain? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I know. I know where all the lights are. Yeah. I know. Like I, I you know, I don't dr- I look. I drive, uh, you know, a few miles over the speed limit. I'm not, you know, I'm not sitting in the middle lane going 30. But, uh, you know, some of you people, I, again, I can see what's in front of me. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason I'm not going 90 because I know I'm only going to go, you know, 10 yards up the road. Then I'm going to be at a red light. For for the record, Fitz, I did screw somebody like that. <laughs> we all have. But, you know, we, but you don't walk around the yeah. road, do I, with, like, uh, but, with but, that attitude but, like but, but we're in my a country. Defense, the, the guy looked like a, a idiot who was up here just trying to, like, creep out of shop right and block my lane. So I was like, screw you. Get out of the way. I'm first. But, hey. Yeah. Hey, sometimes listen, you got to do it. But we're listen. not talking about you. We're talking about other people. Oh. No, but listen, that's not my point. My whole thing is don't be a hypocrite. No. Like, we don't walk around any of the three of us, like, I'm with, not, our, with our cowboy boots on our shirt saying, we're, you know, we're country folk. Come I'm on in. I'm not telling we're, you about my family values. No, exactly. We're, we're three idiots, and sometimes we act like right. idiots. Most of the time we act like idiots. But you know what you're getting right out front. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not a hypocrite. No. No. That's I'm why. I, that's why I need like that animal house car at the end, like you know, the death mobile, <laughs> where I could just like start ramming people. Here, like. Here's here's another thing, with the the, the these uh, country bumpkins up here. What's with the rebel flags? I, look, I don't. They lost. I don't have anything. I, I, this is not a political or a racial argument or whatever. But there was a war. You live in the North. Yes. If you would have been flying that flag during the Civil War in New Jersey, <laughs> you would have been, been up. You'd have been shot. Yeah. They would have hung you from the mighty you, oak on the car. What are you trying to represent? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it's not a race thing, whatever. I don't know what you're trying to represent, but I'm telling you, you live in New Jersey. Yeah. This is not part of the Confederacy. Because they're idiots. We, they're, they're trying to show how country they are again listen that, because yeah. we we're so country we love listen i love leonard skinner you know and leonard skinner had that flag on some of their album whatever but leonard skinner's from florida <laughs> right it's a difference they could do it they're from the south you're not you're from you're from new jersey the north part of new jersey you're almost in like friggin new england for god's yeah. sakes yeah, yeah. You, you're you, this is you know you can't get much more north as far as like civil war stuff goes. we got <laughs> really really huge right. battles around <laughs> here it's uh you, you can't you know People, people, you know, people killed each other back then over that stuff. Now yeah, you, I mean, it's, it's just, it's yeah, silly. brothers, and not so much here though. No. You know, up here, everybody was like, "Nah, this is the North. This is America. Yeah. You people are trying to." Every, you know. Everything was fine up here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. It, listen, I, I don't care. Like that, this is like that whole like we were talking about the, the Raiders leaving Oakland. We're not from Oakland, so. We, we, we're, 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 what's our saying? It. I'm not from the South, so I'm not going to weigh in on this flag, pro con, whatever. Yeah. But it's a Southern thing. That being said, and this ain't the South. South, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And and stop talking with a Southern accent. Yeah. Uh, but I I, I, I got to tell you, I do I do <laughs> laugh every time. I and mean, I haven't seen him in a while. But there was that that one goober up here who had his, his big pickup truck, and oh. it, it was that that Confederate flag was bigger than 
life itself, and you had it up on the back, and I'm that thing not, was flapping I'm all not, over the place like a I mental have, patient. I have. I'm just. I'm not going to say. I, I. I will say this. That flag was once found in the Franklin Pond. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that's that's as far as I'm going to go. He did get a replacement, but. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is, you know, it, it means something different to the people in the South or a lot of people in the South, whatever. When you're up here, it it, it shows the wrong message and you're an idiot. Just it's, it, it, you know what? You know, it's a really cool flag that you want to fly. The American flag. The Raider it, it's flag. It's pretty cool. And the Raider yeah, flag. The American yeah, there you flag go. Is good. I, I went to, uh, I don't know if you guys know about this because you live in the North. You live in America, uh, right? The South, and I get a lot of family from the South. I have, I've told you guys, I have roots in Alabama, Texas, right. and you know, uh, all over the South, Florida. But they, they still don't know that there's people living down there that don't know the war's over. And so, anyway, yeah. there's there's a thing. In have you ever been to Atlanta? Oh yeah. Okay. Most of my no, other than right airport, outside no. of there. Yeah. All right. There's a th- there's. I went to Atlanta a few years back to play a concert. With the band, I, I actually I did a solo gig because it was a fundraiser, and I was like, "What? What's the sense of flying my whole band out there and paying all that money? Yeah. Be trying to raise money? I'm like, just put a band together there for me. I'll come down. I'll I'll sing." So th- I did that, and I get down, and I see all these signs like all over the the highway on my way to the gig, Stone Mountain, Stone oh, yeah. Mountain. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I've been there many times. So I asked my buddy, "I'm like, what the hell is that?" And he's from California. He's like, "Oh." <coughs> Have you heard of it, Tom? Stone Mountain? Yeah. Yeah. So he says... I've never seen it, but he it looks says, pretty impressive. He rock says rock. to me... It uh, actually is, yeah. He says to me, oh, they built their own Mount Rushmore down here. Yeah, it's kind of like it's, what it is, yeah. It's, well, the same guy, actually. Yeah. Yes. Like, so they've got all the Confederate heroes up there, and uh, you got... Actually, there aren't any Confederate heroes. They all lost. They surrendered. <laughs> They're not heroes. <laughs> they surrendered. But anyway, they got the guys up there that, and they make them look like heroes, yeah. like like they won something. Yeah. Like they're, they're, you know, they're losers. But uh, anyway, they're up there, and uh, and uh, it's a giant carving. The the actual carvings are bigger than the carvings on Rushmore. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Um, uh, and uh. You know, I don't know what they do. They have, like, Friday nights, they have, like, a laser light show, and I yes. think they play Skinner and Molly Hatchet. Yep. They all get down there, and they have a picnic, <laughs> and it's it's great. You know, they, they relive things. But there's, a, there's like, a you could take a train around the whole thing, and yeah. they have a, uh, you go into this, uh, the Confederate Hall, they call it, <laughs> and they show you a movie. And you go and you watch the movie, and they talk about the, War of Northern Aggression, and you come out and you never write again after that. <laughs> you're like, you're like every, you're just completely screwed up. And then you, then you walk outside and they have all the Confederate <laughs> flags, like all the different ones because they changed them. You know, they had the first one they had was red, white, and blue. It looked like the American flag, so the dummies were shooting each other, right? Like because it yeah. looked looked just like the Union flag, pretty much. And then they, they changed it, and the the one that we call the rebel flag now was never actually the Confederate flag. It no, was a, it was one of their battle one flags. One of the battle yeah. flags. But anyway, so me and my buddy Shaggy, who he's uh, from Jersey, we're down there, and we're you know we did the whole thing. We're like, he's amazed. He's like, how does the rest of the world not know about this redneck Rushmore? Um, so we're looking at the the line of flags, and uh, we're cutting up, and you know. And there's a there's a guy next to us, big, you know, hillbilly guy, and he's got his girlfriend there, and he's emotional. He's looking up at these flags, and his eyes are watering. You know, he's very emotional about the whole thing. And uh, I'm a wise guy, right? So I'm like, he and he's explaining to his girlfriend, you know, each of the history of the flags. He doesn't have to read the plaque or anything. He knows it, you of know. Of course. And I, I'm just taking him at his word because what the hell do I know? Happy told him. Right. So I'm. I'm standing there and he's going through his whole spiel and he's very emotional and I'm like, I'm like Shaggy. It's like what? I'm like they're missing one. It's like what? And the other Bubba looks at me. He's like, no, they ain't. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're missing a, missing one of the flags. He's like, oh no, this one was from here, this one from here. Uh, which one are they missing? I'm like the white one, you moron. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only one that counts. <laughs> 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 they raised it like 11 times on the same day. <laughs> that that would have been me. I'd have been standing there. I'd be like, where's the white one you raised on the last day? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Although it is funny, I've been there. I've been there many times. My sister lives right outside of Atlanta, so I've been down there. And uh, usually, it's usually right around Christmas time. So my niece is her birthday is like the beginning of December, so I would go down there a lot. And they always have like a Christmas thing at Stone Mountain, which is pretty cool. You know, it's just bizarre because you're in, in Atlanta and it's Christmas time, and more times than not, it was about seventy degrees. Yeah. So now, like, one time it was actually like a cold front came through and everybody just lost their sh**. Like, right. they got people like flocking to Old Navy to buy gloves and sh**. Dusting. But it was like, it, it was crazy because it, it was like, it was a really nice setup, like very Christmassy, like there's a Christmas laser show, the music going, the, the train was all decorated Christmassy. But then <laughs> they have like this bonfire going where you can like roast marshmallows and hot dogs and they got hot apple cider and hot chocolate and people are online i'm like it's 75 <laughs> degrees out like who the hell wants hot chocolate Fuck, yeah I'm like what, what you people are nuts <laughs> like what the hell's going yeah. on <laughs> but I, that, uh, it's crazy i i it, now i don't know if it's true or not well i know part of it's true the guy that owned that property before it became a state park or whatever he was he was a klansman and uh they 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 would have big clan rallies up there and stuff and, you know, burn their crosses on top of the thing. There'd be like 20 of them up there, drunk, fat guys. That's all you there know. is. is there's yeah. never any 20. That thing, there's yeah. like 20 of them, you know. Yeah, there, you, you know, everybody says these Nazi rallies. I was yeah, like, yeah, at one point. So it, Nazi it rallies like, have been going on since the freaking 50s. Right, there's no right. more than five or it's six. It's like the same six idiots. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no more five, yeah. than five or six of them. And right. The funny know. part is there was actually more known Klansmen in the state of Illinois, that are right. really anywhere down south. Right. Like but nuts. this was this was the resurgence era, like in the yeah. I, I 60s, think they I think I they think. got to like one or maybe two of those cross burnings on Stone Mountain before it was just like, no, this this. Well, was, what happened? There's something like that. So here's if here, I remember right. Yeah. So they, they they you know the the rebirth of the clan was done on top of the mountain, like big you know like again there's like six idiots up there yeah the jews or whatever that <laughs> we're ranting about but they uh so <laughs> that's why you should say that <laughs> <laughs> so when I, when I worked at seiko <laughs> there was there was this older guy that worked there you know you know goose stepping republican everything you know he complained about everybody and I would see the girls talking to him, and then they'd walk away and start laughing. I go, "What did Dave say? The blacks, the gays, the Jews!" And they all start laughing. They're like, "Pretty much." <laughs> but, so, it, apparently, this guy, when he he owned the property, right, and he and he dropped dead of you know of having a black heart or whatever. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> cirrhosis. And, and is so the, the rumor <laughs> the, the rumor is. Yeah, uh, because if you go to Stone Mountain now, it's all black kids working there. The whole, everybody there is, is you know. Yeah. Well, it's a national park, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but apparently, what 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 happened was his daughter, the day after that her father kicked it, she sold it to a black family for like a dollar. <laughs> so the whole park, and uh, which is you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't care because this is the fan club blitz, and we just say whatever the hell yeah. we want. <laughs> I heard it once; it was a rumor. If it sounds good, we're saying well. it. Yeah. My my guess is they're cruising around the Caribbean on a yacht right now. I do, yeah, you know. I, I do believe that's a true story though. Yeah. From, that, from what actually, I understand. The, the, the most the, the best thing I could ever tell you, and I wish I could remember the name from the whole Stone Mountain experience, is right in town when you leave Stone Mountain is just an amazing German restaurant, and I can't remember the name. Great beer, great food. Nice. That's all I got for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't no, know. No, I, I, you want you want more? If you're gonna go to Stone Mountain, Georgia, look, go online, look it up. Everybody's got a computer. Yeah, no, it's it's phone. pretty cool. My I came back and told my wife about it, and then well, you know we we went down to see my son in Florida at one point. She's like, we got to stop and see this thing. <laughs> And uh, she bought a T-shirt and everything. <laughs> Stone Mountain, Georgia. Like, you have to. You have yeah, to. It's like, like it's, if it, you collect crazy <laughs> shit. It, it, yeah. It's crazy <laughs> shit. That's crazy <laughs> shit. Definitely. Should have got the snow globe. I think we did get a snow All globe. Right, there too. You yeah. yeah. No, you know what I got? I got one of those... I definitely got mugs. a shot glass. <laughs> I was I was going to get the shot glass, but they had metal, those mugs are. That it, had the, it had the monument thing on there. You fill it with ice for a certain amount of time, and then it, it like always stays cold. Like if you put something cold into it, it, oh, okay. and it, it gets up to a certain point, and, and, the, and the south stays, winds. It, it always, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect because this beer is surrendering to me right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my takeaway from there. And, and, and we, you know, to any of our southern listeners out there, nothing against you. 
You lost. Yeah. It's over. Listen, any any just keep the good food coming. That's yeah. all I want, man. Look, Savannah, great food. You yeah, know, Charleston, great food. Hey, all of, all North, of the food North downtown, Carolina man. barbecue. Yes, you know I it's, I just yeah, went for barbecue stuff. today, and that the uh, up here and the guy prides his barbecue after the Carolina barbecue. Yeah, oh, yeah. Western or Eastern? Because uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the he, Eastern. He, he's the, the mustard sauce. vinegar based. Yeah, I like yeah, the yeah, Eastern. He, he, Me too. I'm with you on the vinegar. He used the mustard based sauces. Yeah, so I don't even just, eat meat, and I'm talking about and it's, you know, you know, my favorite part. It's phenomenal crap, and I've had it downstairs, down there, roadside, everything. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you listen, know, keep the good food coming, people. Yeah. That's all we need to know. Yeah, and listen, we're not telling anybody up here about your boiled peanuts no. because oh, I love boiled that, peanuts. Yeah, uh, we want to let you keep that. Yes, because we eat it when we go down there, and it's cool. Yes, but uh, some, if they some, start some of doing us it up here, online. if they start doing it up here, they're going to screw it up. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be a mess. Yeah, uh, I found a good online place for them. Did you? Yes. Yeah, we picked up they, they some. They ship uh, fresh. We stopped at some place on the way back, uh, one of our trips down south, and I I do love the south. I it's do too. Great. I love. I you know, tell you what, I the my favorite thing about the south, Waffle House. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waffle scattered houses scattered everywhere. Scattered and splattered. Oh, the, the how closest, do you go wrong there? Closest one to us is uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, yeah. or Scranton, or Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Waffle House though, everywhere in the South, it's amazing. They are it's amazing. amazing. It's like two dollars, and you can eat like ten pounds of potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Same like, thing with the Huddle House. It's like the redheaded stepchild of the Waffle House. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. Yeah, love so it. keep that up, and uh, you know Waffle House. If you're listening, I'd love to start a franchise up here in Sussex County. I yeah, know it would do well. It would do well. It's just like the South. Yes. It's uh, you do well. Yeah, yeah. That up here, man, that'd be that'd be a friggin' meth yeah. par- paradise yeah. up here for those guys yeah. coming in. By <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. They give it that. Yes, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Finally, some competition for Arby's. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, so there you go. Well, we have yeah, con- the Confederacy up north. Yep. How about that? Yep. Interesting. New yep. Jersey. We, uh, people don't even know. People that people have no idea. They think of New Jersey and they think of the Sopranos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Hey, back the only, the only thing the Sopranos have to do up here is where they hid bodies. Yeah. You that's know, it. That's about it. Where we are is no uh, no Tony Soprano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is Tom. I guess uh, we're going to be wrapping up our show here. Um, if you have any questions for me or you want to call in and uh, talk about anything you want on uh, the Raider Fan Club Blitz, um, our number is 732-798-0257. Feel free. Ask me about Mr. Skittles. I love Mr. Skittles. Um, we're also going to give a shout out to the Irish Cottage, uh, our home base. They are located at 602 Route 23 North in Franklin, New Jersey. And their number is 973-827-2090. And, uh, give us a call. Let us know what you think. Questions, comments, anything you want to say. Feel free. Talk to you next week. Bye.